It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode, compared to mythology, we can compare and contrast various elements of Jesus Christ to the god Eclipius. For those who have no idea, Eclipius is the son of Apollo and is the god of medicine. From what we can tell, there's actually a cave that's actually dedicated to the god Eclipius. From the 5th century BC onwards, the cult of Eclipius grew very popular and pilgrims flocked to his healing temples to be cured of their ills. Ritual purification would be followed by offerings and sacrifices to the gods and the supplement would be then spread the night in the holiest part of the sanctuary. Any dreams or vision would be reported to a priest who would prescribe the appropriate therapy by a process of interpretation. So what exactly are the similarities between Jesus Christ and Eclipius? For starters, both Jesus Christ and Eclipius are both born directly out of miraculous conception. His eyes. About that time, the raven changed his color from white to black. He who had been once silver white as the doves, as geese whose wakeful cries were destined to rescue Rome, as white as river-loving swans. But his tongue doomed him. The chattering bird was everything not white. In Thessaly, no girl grew half as fair as pretty young Coronis of Larissa. As long as she was chaste, or thought to be, O god of Delphi, then the girl was pleasure in your eyes. But her unfaithfulness was closely witnessed by Apollo's bird, who ran, or rather flew, to tell his master. When bright Apollo, god and lover, heard this news, the laurels melted from his curls, his face, his color, paled, the plectra fluttered from his hand, and as his heart flamed into growing rage, he snatched his usual weapons, strong taught his bow, aimed at and pierced the breast that he so often held against his own. Then as he drew his arrow from her heart, and her white belly and thighs ran red with blood, the girl groaned, Phoebus, oh, this deepest thrust was well deserved, but first I should have given the child beneath my heart his light of day, for now we die as one. And with these words her life poured from her veins in blood, body and limbs grown cold within the cold of death. Her lover wept too late, too late for tears or to undo the cruel act done. He hated self, the self that heard her guilt, the self that fired with rage, hated the raven who made him hear the rumors of her sins which caused his anger and his present grief, hated his bow, hated his quick arrow and the hand that sped it. He kissed the fallen girl and tried to force a victory over fate, but now his arts of medicine were useless. When his caresses failed, when he at last caught glances of the red, the glaring pyre that fires white limbs to ashes, though faces of the gods cannot shed tears, his deep heart groaned, groans that the young cow utters when in her sight the hammer falls. She hears the blow, aimed at the right ear through the skull of the unweaned calf. Then Phoebus poured sweet-smelling ointment on his dead love's breast, and for the last time held her in his arms. Nor can he let her rest as honored dead, nor bear the thought of his own son consumed by the same fires that take his mother's body. He tore the flame-wrapped child out of its womb, and took it to the cave of centaur Chiron. The raven, waiting praise for truthfulness, stood by. But Phoebus promptly banished him to night, far from the haven of white birds. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, 
Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. When Eclipius was alive, he had the absolute ability to create medicine and also heal people, and so many people will flock to him and they will be healed directly from Eclipius. Meanwhile, there are many people that flock to Jesus, ask for Jesus to heal them, and they get healed directly from Jesus in various parts of the New Testament. Asclepius, say the Epidorians, learned the art of healing both from Apollo and from Chiron. He became so skilled in surgery and the use of drugs that he is revered as the founder of medicine. Not only did he heal the sick, but Athene had given him two phials of the Gorgon Medusa's blood. With what had been drawn from the veins of her left side, he could raise the dead. With what had been drawn from her right side, he could destroy instantly. Others say that Athene and Asclepius divided the blood between them. He used it to save life, but she to destroy life and instigate wars. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that was sick. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman, having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood staunched. There cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out, and took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And, her and it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother. And they... The final similarities between the two characters is the idea of lightning, because once Jesus Christ died on the cross, the skies turned dark and there's lightning as soon as he died. Among those whom Asclepius raised from the dead were Lycurgus, Capanius, and Tyndarius. 
It is not known on which occasion Hades complained to Zeus that his subjects were being stolen from him, whether it was after the resurrection of Tyndarius, or of Glaucus, or of Hippolytus, or of Orion. It is certain only that Asclepius was accused of having been bribed with gold, and that both he and his patient were killed by Zeus's thunderbolt. However, Zeus later restored Asclepius to life, and so fulfilled an indiscreet prophecy made by Charon's daughter, Oiepe, who had declared that Asclepius would become a god, die, and resume godhead, thus twice renewing his destiny. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. <laughs> I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.